Hi there. Question three. It's all about uh, terminal velocity. It's all about falling through the air. Uh, I've got a video on how to calculate weight, which is the first question, and a question on ter a video on terminal velocity as well. So uh, go and find those if you fancy. If you're not sure about this stuff, if you fancy brushing up before you attempt this question. Uh, terminal velocity is all about a balance of two forces. Uh, the two forces when you're falling are weight and air resistance. Okay, so these are the, the only two forces acting on a parachutist in free fall. It means he's just falling without anything else attached to him. His mass is 75 kilograms, so we know his mass. You're asked to calculate the weight of the parachutist and you're told the gravitational field strength is 10 newtons per kilogram. So the first question just gives you some data and asks you to use the correct equation from the physics equation sheet, show clearly how you work a answer and give a unit. See, there's no unit there, it means there is a mark for the unit. Uh, there you go, have a go at that, find your physics equation sheet and have a go at that. Okay, welcome back. So the correct equation from the physics equation sheet was weight is, uh, sorry, weight is mass times gravitational field strength. So this should be quite an easy one for you. Just check before you do anything else that mass is in the correct units. So mass is 75 kilograms. Yep, that's okay. That's what we normally use in physics. We don't convert into grams. We use kilograms. And yet, this is newtons per kilogram. So the units are what we call coherent. They're ready to go together into the equation. So M goes where the M goes. And G goes where the G goes. We go 75 times 10. The weight is 750. Uh, all right. So far, I've only got two marks, though. Correct numbers in the correct places. Correct answer, but I need a third mark, and that's for giving the unit. Weight is a force, so it's measured in newtons. And that is the third mark. Okay, let's move on. This one, this next one coming up, is one of the quality of written communication questions. It's a six mark question, and you'll always see this little bit of writing. In this question, you'll be assessed on using good English, organizing information clearly, and using specialist terms. I want you to focus on this bit here. This is the bit that is most easily corrected. Well, good English, though, I'll just say this, does not mean a nice, expressively written bit of prose. Uh, or anything that you would normally see in a English language exam. Okay, it is expressing things clearly, expressing arguments clearly, not uh, writing very interesting prose, just writing clearly. Uh, when you are see this, think about organising information clearly, and I want you to think about two paragraphs that you could write. In every single one of these questions, always think two paragraphs I can write there's got to be kind of two sections to the answer and they're always structured in that same way two clear paragraphs it says the question says the graph shows how the vertical velocity of a parachute changes from the moment the parachute jumps from the aircraft until landing on the ground so you can see the y-axis says vertical velocity in meters per second and the x-axis is time in seconds. So this is a velocity time graph. And again, look at the video that I've made of this because I go through this exact question, this exact problem. Using the idea of forces, remember the forces from the diagram before, they were weight downwards and air resistance upwards. Explain why the parachutist reaches terminal velocity and why the opening of the parachute reduces the terminal velocity. Two paragraphs from me saying that. Why the parachute reaches a term parachutist, sorry, reaches a terminal velocity and why the opening of the parachute reduces the terminal velocity. So I'm going to suggest your two paragraphs are as follows. 
your two paragraphs are one up until this high terminal velocity and two why do we get this second lower terminal velocity okay have a go at writing yourself a six mark answer okay welcome back so again i'll go through this step by step initially the parachutist jumps out and he's only got his weight so the first thing to say in this section of the graph here this first section of the graph we can say that weight is larger than the drag okay you can write that in words in the answer weight is larger than the drag therefore the there is an acceleration okay drag increases steadily you could say that until you reach this section of the graph up here this high terminal velocity and at this point weight is equal to drag okay you've got a constant velocity you've got a terminal velocity it's a high terminal velocity okay that's your first paragraph those kind of four ideas in there then he opens the parachute and all of a sudden you have still got the same weight you've got a massive drag a massive air resistance so here weight is less than drag or drag is greater than weight therefore he decelerates until finally he reaches this new terminal velocity this new lower terminal velocity down here but it's a terminal velocity nonetheless because weight is equal to drag okay because he's decelerated the drag is once again equal in size to the weight okay so this is a new and lower terminal velocity okay lots of ways to write that but those are the key ideas that you need to get yourself the six marks okay moving on a student wants to investigate this idea and he writes the following hypothesis the larger the area of the parachute the slower the parachutist falls to test this hypothesis, the student made three model parachutes. The student dropped, oh sorry, from one large plastic bag. The student dropped each parachute from the same height and timed how long the parachute took to fall. So the question is not really about terminal velocity, it's about the experiment. The height the student dropped the parachute from was one control variable, and you're told that up there, the same height. Remember, that's what controls are, things we keep the same in an experiment. So you've been given that one. You need to think of one other control variable in the experiment. Have a go. I'm going to say the most obvious answer to this is the mass. Ooh, whoopsie daisies. The mass of the clay. Okay, that's going to be the most obvious one. But also, you're told he's made it out of one large plastic bag, so it's the same material each time. And also, it could have an effect if he made this one with only, say, four strings, and this one with six strings, and this one with eight strings. So another one would be the number of strings. Okay, it is acceptable to say size of the clay, or amount of volume, or shape of the clay as well. Uh, and the same material is made out of the same um, modelling clay itself. 
Last part of question three then, another long question. Using the student's hypothesis to predict which parachute A, B or C will hit the ground first. Write your answer in the box and give yourself a reason. So let's have a quick look back at his hypothesis. Larger the area, slower the parachutist. So the, the largest area is A, that's the slowest. We need to predict, predict which one the fastest one will be. Have a little go at that and then come back and check your answer. That's right, it's going to be C. You need to give a reason to get any marks at all in this. Okay, you only get, if you write C and don't explain it, you don't get any marks. Give a reason for your answer. Well, it's got the smallest surface area. So it falls the fastest. Okay, you could say smaller surface area, so it has the least drag, so it falls faster. But that is your, importantly, that is your answer. Okay, thank you very much. If you're ready, we'll go straight on to the next question.